So these are some examples of how not to write for brass quintet, covering a few common pitfalls. Uh, the first one we're going to hear is an example where all of us are playing all the time in all the same rhythm and there's nowhere to breathe at all. Um, and we'll be taking this very literally the first time through and then with a more musical approach the second time to see what we can do with something instinctively, but we'd rather have it given to us more clearly. So this is very literal the first time. <laughs> So as you'll see from that, we were making a point because when we ran out of air, we stopped instead of doing something musical, which is take a quick breath, miss a couple of notes out and come back in. But it just makes the point, as you can see, the, the trumpets were the last people standing in that. So we'll have another go at it now, play it again uh, in a more musical way, and the three of us will drop out for the odd note here and there. And I think you'll probably see that you wouldn't be able to tell too much difference in terms of what it sounds like overall. So just remember to write in some rests so we've got a chance to breathe. <laughs> So our next example is where the composer writes some quite interesting stuff musically but there's no indication of any kind of articulation or uh, phrase shape or anything such along those lines. Um, so we're going to play it very literally the first time with no, no sense of, we're going to play it a bit like a, a music software, we'll play it back um, and then we'll play it again afterwards in a more hopefully more intuitive musical fashion. So as you will hear the second time we played that, because the idiom is a sort of familiar fanfaronic kind of thing, you will have heard that the trumpets gave the rest of us the cue by playing with a little accent at the beginning and then come away because it's a, a sort of motif which echoes through the group. Um, if you play and just play sustained, then you're uh, blocking the interest for the next person who comes in. So there's a nice little crisp accent and a come away. So just an accent would be all it would take there. Just a standard sideways accent would, would be all you'd need. And so our final example of this is, is uh, one where the composer hasn't given us any time to change from playing in an open fashion to a muted fashion. So as you can see with the mute issue, there's not actually as much we can really do about that as there is with some other issues because it's a physical act and there's a limit to how quickly we can do something. So even the allegedly better version wasn't actually much better. It was still noisy and disruptive. So if we got something like that, we'd probably actually put a GP bar in the middle of it to, to, to do it. The other thing the composer can do, which would be helpful, is to put 
uh, mute ready at the beginning of the piece, which alerts the performer that there is a quick change coming up. Obviously, no beats is too quick for anybody, but at least if you, if you have a GP bar, what we can do is then get our mute ready somewhere like this to put in quickly. So we'll have another go now with a GP bar in the middle of it, and hopefully that will sound a bit more musical. <laughs> 